Hey, I'm Mario. Welcome to another System Design episode. This time I'll share with you how to implement a gRPC server, specifically a Junary RPC. So what is gRPC? gRPC is a modern open source remote procedure called framework that can run anywhere. It typically uses protocol buffers to describe both the service interface and the structure of the payload messages. The previous two episodes cover that. The link to those will be in the description of this video. This service interface allows you to define methods that can be called remotely. There are four kinds of service methods. Junary RPC, Server Streaming RPC, Client Streaming RPC, and Bidirectional Streaming RPC. Like I said in the beginning of this episode, I am implementing a Junary RPC, which is the simplest one, where a client sends a single request to the server and gets a single response back, like a normal function call. Let me show you the code that demonstrates this. So let's go. As usual, the code to this example will be in the description of this video, so feel free to check that out. What we need first is to look at the readme. There is a new instruction that I've added right here called go install for installing the gRPC plugin for Go. Uh, so we do around go install and you know the whole package. If you look at the bin, the file will be right there. What we have to do next is update the gen YAML for buff and it's literally just copying what we had before and adding if we gRPC right here because if you remember the way buff allows you to define plugins for using them to generate code is literally uh, whatever comes afterwards in the binary names which in this case will be go gRPC the options are literally the same so that's pretty easy to implement next what we have to do is look at the implementation of user proto and I'm going to be copying these three lines for implementing the actual service. The convention is to actually implement the service next to where you're defining uh, or where you're using your, your types. So we are going to be implementing a service for user. Therefore, we are going to define a user to, uh, on underscore service dot proto. And we are going to be importing the user v1 proto right user dot proto and this is because we're going to be implementing a service for the user type in this case we'll be use a simple thing for getting a user value using a request and returning a response so the way another convention will be to define a user service i forgot the semi semicolon right here uh, not service there will be not or rather not rpc but rather service we define an rpc we define the method name the payload which should be get user request which is the convention it returns a get user response let me fix this one. and that's pretty much it i want to call out a few things if you notice there is a get user here that represents the method name so this is a convention to keep things uh, consistent across the board but more importantly it allows you to evolve your service uh, in the future so avoid things like get user maybe a string or returns user try to always define concrete messages for each one of the payloads that you're going to be returning and receiving otherwise you're going to be having troubles in the future you have to trust me on that node now that we have this again will be what we have the user service this is one convention as a postfix and then get user will be the method name and you use a pen request for the request and response for the response if we do a buff link you will need the, this is a, they will have an error because we don't need this one uh, actually we are missing this we miss the the parenthesis if we run again uh, it's complaining now because obviously we need to define those two messages so we need to define a message get user request And we need to get a message response. So we are uh, receiving as a payload a uh, request with the UUID and we're returning a user response. Nothing crazy. If we run buff lint again, you will notice that everything seems to be working as expected. We run buff generate. Before I do that, let me show you the, the status of the repository. We have a file that we just added, which will be the one right here and the one being modified which is the buff gen jammer nothing nothing crazy out of the nothing out of the ordinary if you run buff generate 
what is going to happen is going to be generating the implementation for both the client and the server for this grpc service so we we do another git status you'll notice that now we have a few more files like the grpc the one that we had before uh, obviously the ruby one and the one that we just created a while ago if we open the generated for ruby uh, which is right here or rather the one for go for rpc you will notice that uh, i want to call out a few things and one of them oh i think i opened it yeah i didn't mean to open the ruby one but rather the go one so if i look at this i want to show you a few more important oh first of all we need to do go mod we need to run go mod tidy because we are adding those uh, two new packages right here. So if I reload this file, you will notice that the errors are gone. Important. What I want to show you, oops, what I want to show you is that right now we have uh, two important types that we're going to be using for implementing the server and one for implementing the client, or rather for using the client to connect to the server and access the method that we just defined. The one that we care about is called user service, and there are two of them. If you notice, there's a client. And there is a server let's open this server what the server defines is an interface type that indicates a get user method if you don't know uh, if you're not familiar with this interface and go again we'll be i will be leaving a link in the description so you can check that out but basically we need to implement a type that implements this interface and then we can assign that type to the grpc server when instantiating and therefore we can instantiate our final grpc server let me show you so for doing this we're going to be opening a new file or rather yeah opening a new file let's call it in examples uh, let's go let's follow the whole trail so examples let's call it server and in server we're going to create a new file called main.go what this one is going to be doing is going to be implementing this type so i'm going to be copy in this so i don't forget the actual signature of the interface i want to comment that out for now oops what the heck is that <laughs> so let's see there you go so we need to define like i said a type that implements this interface so we can define a type let's call the uh, user service and it doesn't really matter for now because it's an example but i will show you what i mean with this uh, we create a, f a new method so you you a pointer to user service get user contest error so on so forth we return nil for now nil nil now this one is referring to the user pb that we did implemented before if you remember so user pb this is going to be pulling the type that we need that is basically right here remember when we define our package we call it user pb so this whole package name will be used when important uh, and referring to the type that we need in this case which will be the get user request and get user response so so far everything seems to be working if i compile this I shouldn't be getting any errors as you can see down here let me show you there is no error so 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 far everything seems to be working let me remove this one obviously it's not implemented the whole the whole thing is not implemented what we need to do next is implement the actual server or rather initialize the server now for demonstration purposes what i'm going to be returning here i'm going to be returning a user pv get user response uuid uuid uh, the value that we receive in the request which will be let's call it rec uuid full name uh, will be mario and nil so in this case if the implementation oops, I made a mistake did you notice that it doesn't have to be the fields because like i said in the protocol buffer that we define above or rather not above in the in the for the service this the user get user response is actually finding a field called user right here so we need to go back and define a user which is a pointer with these two fields okay so with that it's actually like this 
So with that, we define the user field that represents the get user response, which is right here, if you notice. And just for, for now, for simplicity, we're just returning the UUID that I receive, uh, print, uh, returning that back to the client and whatnot. The important bit about this, like I said, we already implemented the method for the get user implementation for this gRPC service. Now we need to instantiate the gRPC server and attach this gRPC service to the server and start listening for connections. Let's do that next. For doing that, we need a piece of code that looks like this. Um, so all of these lines, I will explain each one line by line. So we need to define, now this one is complaining again. Okay, let's do a commod, tidy one more time. There you go, we do an edit. There you go, it's not complaining about that import anymore. So we instantiate a listener using TCP and the port, you know, 80, 98, 79, that's fine. Then we instantiate a new gRPC server. What comes next is we need to register the server to this implementation of that specific service. So you might be wondering, hey, where is this method coming from? This register user service server is coming from the auto-generated code that is coming from the gRPC uh, plugin and so on and so forth. So we, if we want to look at that, you will see that it's just instantiating, uh, connecting the server that we instantiated before, which is right here, with the implementation of the actual gRPC service, which again is implemented by this type called user service. So basically it's doing some sort of, um, not, well, yeah, dependency injection, like we did that before in the other series that I have. And with that, if we do a go, let's jump into examples, server, go around main, you will notice that uh, I'm having, it's an argument to don't not implement user server, server, means it, oh. And this is another thing really important. So I have to call this must embed unimplemented uh, service server method. Okay, so this is another thing that it depends on, the way we have it right here in the gRPC implementation, they added recently a way to enforce the fast forward uh, compatibility. So in order to prevent that, we have to do this thing, which requires adding this line uh, right here. All right, uh, in path opt here, right here. Now what this does is taking, um, getting rid of that enforce implementation or force implementation when you add new methods. Long story short, typically you don't need this, but I'm going to be on it just for the demo that we have right here. In the final code, you will see what is implemented and required. So please check that out. So if I do a buff generate, uh, buff.jump does not exist. Uh, and that's because, ah, because I need to do it right here, buff generate. If I do go back to my file, go run main, you will notice that now everything is working. I mean, it's not doing anything because there's the client. So let's look at the client that I implemented already for demonstration purposes. So the client that I implemented before looks like this. Let's see the client and there is a main.go file. The interesting thing about the RPC is that the clients are already generated. You just have to literally pass in the values uh, define the, the data that you need to define in the requests, basically the argument. Like I said in the beginning, it's typically like a function call uh, and sort of looks like that. One thing that you have to do is obviously pass in the connection and connect to the client. Uh, or rather, open a connection, use the gRPC client, and uh, use it in the same generate code, make the actual request. So let me close all of these, go to the examples, client and then go run main.go and you will notice that now it's printing out the values that I want, uh, which are coming from the code that is in server main. Let's show it again. Uh, nothing spectacular is just receiving, the value that has been, that, that is being received is the value that is being printed out. If I change the client to say, instead of Mario, says where are you do, 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 here uuid hello which is the one being printed out right here let's change the uuid to i don't know one two three it doesn't really matter for now if i run this again you will notice that now the value that i'm printing out is one two three pretty straightforward to me a few things that i didn't include but i will be included in the near future will be 
using actual certificates, which is one of the most important things. If your knowledge is right here, this one doesn't have concrete certificates, it's using insecure credentials. And this is important to always use secure uh, or credentials when connecting to gRPC or when interacting with gRPC services. So this is for now. Thank you for watching. In the next episodes, obviously I will be covering there are gRPC kinds like bidirectional uh, client streaming and server streaming. So please stay tuned and as always take care, stay safe and see you. Bye bye.